Good morning. I had a question. Robert asked, can Canva help me to diagram plot points for my novel in progress? And the answer is yes, yes, it can. And I've only recently started doing this. So this is a, a mood a board thing that I made for a book that I'm writing. And I use it for my post-it plotting and for saving images so that I can use them for inspiration. So let's go over to Canva and I'll show you how to make one for yourself. Let's go to Canva, Canva homepage, click on whiteboards, create new. This is Canva tips for authors, helping authors use Canva better for their book marketing, or in this case, book plotting. If you're an author who'd like to talk to other authors about how to use Canva, come and join the Facebook group. It is free and the link is in the description. If you would like some free stuff, sign up for the newsletter. Again, the link is in the description. Alrighty. So this is a Canva whiteboard. As you can see, it is just a big board full of dots. Now this thing is huge. Okay. This is, um, it's got infinite scroll on it, so you can just make it massive. Okay. So let's first of all, go to fit. Now this would fit the whole of your whiteboard. You can zoom in whoa, or zoom out. So if you've got bad eyesight like me, you can zoom right in. Okay. Now what can you put on here? So let's go to elements. You have sticky notes, shapes that you can use, uh, and whiteboard graphics and stickers, and obviously all the rest of the things like photos and videos and charts and tables and frames and all of the things, they all go on here. If you're writing a book, you probably all know about the post-it method. So let's talk about post-its first. So sticky notes. The name of the person who added it goes at the bottom. So um, this is if you're working collaboratively. I mean, if it's just you, it doesn't matter. So if you are the sort of person that does post-it plotting, this is perfect for you. So just write your scenes on the perfect on the post-its and move them around to fit you. So I don't know, let's see. Let's go Beauty and the Beast. Beauty asks her father. Or rose. So let's say we're writing this from the point of view of the beast and the point of view of beauty. So beauty's father getting stealing the rose is from the beast's point of view. Beast extracts a promise from the father. So you have all of these and then you can have extra notes on, I don't know, about the castle and the setting. And then what you can do is you can go to the screen thing fit and you can see now I've obviously incompletely plotted this, but you can see everything that's in blue is all your beauty stuff. Uh, everything that's in pink is the beast stuff and you can put it in the right order. If you think, okay, well, the thing that beauty likes about the beast number two probably should be earlier on. You could just swap it around. So, there's loads and loads and loads of books on post-it plotting. Julie Cohen has an excellent post-it plotting uh, workshop, uh, which I can put the link in the description. Want to, um, if you have different sections of your book, you can select the post-its that you want and group, and then you can move, move them around in chunks. There is a way somewhere to give the group a name, but uh, I can't work out where that is. So, um, also you can sort them by topic, which is weirdly AI. So you, you can sort them by topic or by color or by the name of the person, but this is going to be you, right? So, so that's also another useful feature if you wanted to have a quick look and see if your story was balanced. So if you were color coding by character, you could see how well balanced it was by sorting it to see whether you had a lot more of one character. Than the other, and then you hit undo to send everything back to the way it was. So if you're going to use it to make, to watch plot points, just put out all the scenes that are in your head on here, color code them if you need to, and then organize them so that you can see them. And then as you write them, you can tick them off. There we go. As you write them, you can take them off.
The other thing that you can do, and you can do this on the same canvas if you like. So scroll down a bit. You can then have, I like to use it for this, which is a timeline. So we just use a team calendar here. And zoom in, not 4%. Let's go to about 50%. Oh, that's too much. Okay. So you can, I like to do that and then just uh, shrink my post-it notes and stick them in the right days so that I know what's happening on each day as part of the story. I am very bad at calendars and timelines. So this is really helpful for me. Early on in the research process, you can just pull in pictures and stick them in and uh, make inspiration boards. Let's have a look. Let's stick some pictures in. I'm just going to pull some pictures at random. Let's go with this one and another character and their cute dog. Oh, where did the cute dog go? I want to have a dog now. Oh, this one. Nice dog. There you go. And a house for them to live in. This is possibly Beauty and the Beast with elderly people who live in, one of whom lives in a house like this. I don't know, making it up as I go along. Right, so you can pull in inspiration photos. You can add in screenshots that you've taken. You can add whatever you like, really, stickers and things. And then you can also, you can go for lines. So let's use a line. And you can use it to join people. Now you can join these lines. You can join them to the center of your image or the edge of your image. So let's join it to the center of this one. And then you can move this one around. There you go. And so when you move these guys around now, they are connected. And if you wanted to, if you click on the line again, you can change it to a curved line or an elbowed line. And I think this is going to be her dog. So let's keep that one. Alpha line. Let's connect her to her dog. And the dog can probably move around as well. Come on, connect to the dog. There you go. And you can move the dog around as well. So it's quite useful for brainstorming and things like that. And you can add stickers and whatever you want. The other thing that I use it for is checklists. You can make a little to-do list like this and just add items of what you want to remind yourself to do. This is good if you are self-publishing. There are loads and loads of checklists that you can use to make your own that works for you. You can also use it to track your writing progress. You can make a little chart with your date and your word count to see where you get to. Um, I don't use Canva for that. I, I do. I have a colouring in paper one where I, I made a, a word count tracker and I colour it in by hand and I write all my due dates on it so that I know that I'm staying on track. Um, I have a tutorial on how to make one of those. That's a very offline thing. Um, I will link that above. So yeah, as you can see, Canva whiteboards, super, super useful for doing lots and lots of different things. Um, probably the most useful for helping to diagram plot points is using the post-its. So we zoom in, we zoom across, and then we scroll up until we find our post-its. Where have we gone? Yeah, this is just a quick introduction on how to use Canva whiteboards. If you have any questions or 
any suggestions, extra suggestions about how you could use whiteboards, drop a note in the comments. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for your time.